I'm surprised you never played poker. You know, I, you're, I, you're, you're, like, you're all about the math. And you're a smart guy. Here's, here's, the, here's the problem. Is that now? This is where I learned from Richard Hart. I learned, I learned from Hex and stuff and everything. So he's, he used to play a lot of online poker. He used to play all these games and stuff. Yeah. And here, here's the problem: is that I can and will be if if I focus on anything, I'll get good at it. I've literally done it. I've, I've like I'll get if I want to get good at it, I'll get good at it. But here's the problem: it's such a time sink. Yeah. This is the problem. So it's that's like, true. So look, so look, if I look. Let me invest two years of my life, start playing fucking poker, playing Texas Hold'em. Every night, I, I literally, can, I could play at Caesars or I could play at like MGM. I could play every fucking day of the week. Yeah. All the time. Then I have to watch videos and then I have, I have to be at home playing. So it basically, it's a giant time sink for me. Or I just go find a new altcoin or I find a new coin and I can make fucking so much more. Basically, I'm like, I'm ba uh, as an example. Now, this just, just as an example, not like tooting my horn here. Let's just say I'm, I don't know. I'm, I don't know, Floyd Mayweather in boxing and stuff and in terms. So like, it, like I could, in this, in this arena, I've already spent all this time. I've already sunk. I've already, I've already have all this um, data and stuff. I, I can yeah. pick, I know what to do in this arena that I, my competitive advantage against the average guy is like insanity. Like I can get early on things or just put enough money into things and earn enough cash and get out before the, a lot of the people kind of wake up. Obviously you take losses here. No one's, per, no one's got a perfect track. Sure. Record. But compare that to like, I know when I'm on the poker table that I'm a fucking fish. Got it. I know that. I played with Charlie before. Charlie's pretty de pretty decent at it and stuff. But I played on the table. I'm just playing with 200, 300 bucks. Just yeah. having for fun at Caesars or something like that. And I know, like, out of all the times I played, like, I won a couple of hand good hands here and there. Even with some good hands, you still could lose. Of course. Yeah. That's like, the aggravating thing with poker. You could do everything right and still lose the hand. Right. Like, the, the number one hand I see people losing with is fucking pocket aces. Yeah. All the, isn't that fucking, how fucked is yeah. that? Yeah. I see more, like more. I've seen more. You, you could get, you could get, you could get uh, pocket jacks, yeah. queens, kings. You're more likely to win those hands than aces because people get reckless on aces. Yeah, because it's like they get emotionally attached. They yeah. they can't get rid of them. They can't throw them away. They can't throw them away. Or on top of that, too, those aces. It's it's a permission slip. You can be degenerate on this one. So let me just, yeah, I'll call three hundred, two thousand. Oh, he called me. Oh shit! Oh, yep. the fuck! Got him, dumbass. Yeah. <laughs> and then like, oh fuck, he's got a straight. Or right. He's got the, oh. Yeah. He flopped a set of threes. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. oh my. Look, when I was, isn't that infuriating? <laughs> it's so infuriating. <laughs> but but that's that's the sort of thing. Is like for me, like I could do the math in my head. Time sync. Like with craps, that was so easy. I picked that shit up. You know the strategy. And then now it's just more about just dice. That's simple, but that's fun. This is why I like to play like games like Slay the Spire. Slay. The, there's a game like called Slay the Spire. Really great game. It's you can just shut it off anytime you like. So I like I, I used to be I used to be a professional World of Warcraft player back in like what was 2008 to like 2010 ish maybe 11 ish, and then I stopped because I was losing my life on that game. Um, I, I like I have that addictive personality, and I used to have it for video games. What I did is I took that, so I was like, let me take this into the money making avenue. So let me put it into my business, and eventually I was able to turn like uh, I was able to turn a very bad business into start making some real money. And then I went into crypto, and that's what that was, what it gave me that skill is like I focused my energy into like business and kind of making money. Yeah. And then on a really bad business because like the, you know they they the, the profit margins are horrible. Then right. I got into a business where it was really good, and then on and then into investing where it's even incredible, and I'm like I'm killing it. So I'm like, wow. <laughs> Versus like poker, like if I win the best tournament in the world, like I'm making eight hundred thousand dollars, which which actually is a fuck ton of money if I could do it. But that the amount of time, like I I don't like you have spent that. Time. You actually could have done that because you've already invested that time in. Right. And that's the thing for you. Fuck yeah, keep doing right, it. Keep right. doing it. Like yeah. it makes total sense. But it's sooner like, or later I will win one of those big ones. You will win. Yeah. Like that's the whole thing. Versus like me, like, okay, now I, the uphill, like, oh shit. Now I've gotta like be a degenerate for five years before yeah. I'm like, okay, now I'm playing along with you and I'm like maybe finishing a hundred. Right. If I'm because there's no way I can catch there's no way I'm able to catch up to you unless I go bananas like, right like i'm playing like six eight games at a time on my laptop right right and then right I'm, then i'm at nighttime going to caesars and just playing trying to win game you know cash game and then yeah. there's there's even people like i've talked to where like they don't play tournaments because they're, they're like oh fuck i just make more money beating I, people at tables and cash game and tournament is two different games Co correct same game but totally different it doesn't play the same yeah so yeah. You, you have to pick you have to pick your your poisons and stuff this is why i tell people like you know if, if you like your you like your job and you like that perfect beautiful then focus on a you you can have like your business and then you can have a secondary passion or something to make money right and then you can have passion but like i just fish if you like fishing perfect right, right? there is people like they're just investing is not them 
but like, but I at least want people to like either own your own business or you're in some lucrative career. Good. So one thing's about my, like one of the things you're wasting an unbelievable amount of time is about your money. Yeah. The other one could be fun, but some people like me, I've been lucky with like the main thing is my money. And then the other thing is also that, so it, it's about making money, yeah. investing and stuff, yeah. but your whole life is about these kind of choices of like, where am I going to spend this time on? But one thing that, just to go back to that other story um, about, you know, from like three hours here in Vegas, one thing that I noticed is um, one thing, this is where like I started, I before I really moved to Vegas, I started actually gambling a little bit more because I found out that I was too cautious in life. Ah. This was, now, this is this is the dangerous part. I love it. This is the dangerous part for you guys is you have to know yourself. Yeah. Actually, I was noticing I wasn't taking shots when I should have. Yeah. Because I was scared. And this cost me so many more years. I would have been so much more successful in my life if I would have took more shots. Yeah. Like, and I didn't. Yeah. And this would cost. So the gambling helped enable me to be take more risk. Now, if you're a risk taking motherfucker and then you're trying to get more risk in your in your fucking brain, this is a recipe for disaster. Yeah. I was already naturally just cautious because I was in I learned about like investing from stocks. So I was in like seven percent I was just throwing in my mutual fund or I'll throw into this ETF or like all right, I'll do, get into a little bit of stocks. Oh, I don't know. And like and like I'll I'll DCA just like a little bit and then eventually I was able then I got confident when I did and that's what it, but it helped me break me out of my shell. Yeah. Other people, this is a recipe for disaster. You have, but this is the thing is that you have to know. That's a dangerous thing is like people don't know themselves. They're like, I'm cautious, but like, bro, you take risks all the time. You be fucking these bitches raw every single time. Right. I'm talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you know what I'm talking about. A hundred percent. I tell you something else that, that a lot of my friends do that I think is a mistake. Um, obviously, there's a lot of risk with gambling, right? Yes. You're gonna play blackjack. But there is a way to, to at least risk it smart. So what I right. mean by that is I have a couple friends that their average bet, they'll, they'll sit down at a $25 minimum table mm -hmm. and they'll bet 50 to, let's say, $150 a hand. Okay. Okay? And they will, there's the song they end up singing at the end of a weekend in Vegas is usually, I lost two grand for the weekend. Yeah. Or I finally broke even. And the reason, in my opinion, why that is, is because they don't, they're not betting amounts. They're betting too small. I know that sounds crazy, but like if you, if you're going to sit down and it depends what you're trying to do. If you just want to have fun yeah. and you come into town with $2,000, you want to have fun a bunch of different times, a bunch of different blackjack sessions. Right. And it is what it is. Have enjoy that. Yes. Okay. But if you really want to try to make money and two grand is, let's say what you're willing to lose. Bring it all to the table with you in that one session. Right. Because what my, some of my friends will do is they'll bring 300 bucks and they'll sit down at the $25 minimum table and they will end up, the longer you sit there, it's the casino's advantage. That's so what you got to play like Dana, right? right. You got to get in and out. You got to do a hit and run. So bet amounts that where you could quit if you win two or three hands in a row. This happened to me in right. This happened to me in, in craps as well because I was playing three when initially I was playing three hundred dollars. Right. And these tables were all twenty five dollar minimums. That's you don't have enough bankroll you right. to really play. And then on top of that, like you don't win enough. Right. You, you do don't it. win enough. So it's like yeah, I tell my buddy, like, okay, great. So you sit down with the three hundred bucks and you bet a hundred dollars a hand. Let's all your say. money in crypto, you guys, today. Yeah. <laughs> Right, Sorry. you bet. You bet a hundred bucks a hand. You bet a hundred bucks a hand. You win three hands in a row. You're up three hundred dollars. Are you quitting? No. No. So why are you betting that amount? You're not betting enough. Not betting. Like come in with the fucking two grand, and just know you got four chances. Five hundred a hand. Four chances. Oh, so you're saying that big? Go, just go for it. And because if you win three in a row, you might quit if you're up fifteen hundred. Right. Because you almost doubled your money. It's so hard. I get, you yeah, know. It's, it's making the money one versus you're trying to play for a long time and hopefully you get lucky. Right, because what's right, going to happen, because right. the way they're going to play, unless they have the discipline to bet the same amount every fucking hand for a whole shoe, that's different. If you have the uh, discipline to show up with two grand and you're just going to bet 100 a hand every hand, never more. That's what you bet. Outside, that's your bet. Outside of splits and stuff. Yeah. Outside of splits and stuff. Yeah. That's different. But if you're going to come in, you're going to bet 50, then 100, lose three in a row. So you're down 275 or whatever, right? Dip back in your pocket, mm. pull out 400, bet 300. Now you're going to uh, an emotional 300, get a double down, 300 more, lose that. Yeah. Now you're down. You know what I mean? It's like it's so hard to win a bunch of hands in a row. That now what you're trying to do is I'm going to try to time my big bet 
Based on, on my feeling. Based on my feeling. Right. Yes, you might get lucky, but that's probably going to backfire. So I just say, like, just, dude, come in guns blazing. If, you get, if you're willing to be really real with what's the dollar amount you're willing to lose, really be real with yourself and, like, what is my normal? Let me take inventory. My last six Vegas trips, I averaged a loss of 2800 bucks. Right. Then show up to the fucking table with 2800 and come in like a fucking psychopath. Right. And bet like a lunatic <laughs> and try to catch your two or three hands in a row and dip and dip out now and play 10 minutes. L- now, let me l- let me tell you guys about this, like in crypto terms, you guys, this is the same thing. There's guys who are like tippy toeing into crypto. Like, yeah, I won't take it too seriously. I'm not going to I'm not going to get educated or I'm not I'm not I'm just going to put a little bit of money here. And then they'll, what ends up happening, I've seen so many guys where they'll, they start off with a very small amount of money and they have then all their money into it. Mm hmm. When, and then they they don't know what they're doing, and then they lose all their cash. This happens a lot in crypto. It happens a lot in anything, really. Yeah. So it's like it's like this is why we say, like all right, you're gonna be like all right, I'm gonna get into crypto. Cool. This is how much money I'm gonna have total to invest. Cool. I'll do a couple DCAs over time, but this is what my initial starting. And then you take it seriously and you fucking commit yourself. You take the crypto mindset course. Then from there you start, you know how to fish. Then from there you you start hunting. You start making these these coins, and then you you wait. Versus like. I'm just going to fuck around for a while. Now I'm going to take it seriously. And then I'm going to lose all my fucking money. Right. And that's the whole thing. It's about like the, the intention basically. Right. right. And the whole thing is you're not telling people to fucking gamble their no. entire fucking fortune. You're just like, this is what, this is what I'm going to play for the weekend. I'm going to play it all in this. Let's go. Yeah. Show up to the table with it. Right. P- bet amounts that if you win two or three hands in a row, you could quit. Right. If you, you're, you're betting 25 a hand, you're going to nickel and dime yourself to a $700 loss. And this has happened to me where I've, I've sort of done that by, kind of by accident and I've won. Right. And then I'm waiting for people to leave the casino and then you start playing again. Right. And then you like... Right. And I always tell my friends, well, you were down 1000 and then you took another 1000 out of the bank. How did you get back? Most of them will go, I just... I bet like I was like, fuck it. I was in fuck it mode yeah. slash tilt. And I bet 250, I doubled down. I'm like, oh, so your big bets got you back to even. So you're always in a position where you're going to nickel and dime yourself early, put yourself in a hole, then throw the Hail Mary yeah. and either lose or get lucky and get back to even. So you getting back to even means you won $1,000 because you're betting like a fucking lunatic. Right. So just come in betting like the fucking lunatic. Just saying. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> Scared money don't make money. It'll come on. She. <laughs> God damn, man. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to mom, man. We love you, brother. I'm glad you're back. But we're making life-changing money. That's right, Kyle. John's a sicko. Respect, man. Yeah. I love it, man. Take a loan out on the house. Sell the wife. Fuck it. Degenerate party of one. Your table's ready. Degenerate party of one. Last call. <laughs>